Good afternoon, hello, and welcome to News Today on your joint news channel here on Multi TV. Coming up, Chief of Kwari Nkrumah, the Central Region, orders demolition of weak structures in the town following heavy rains that has led to the collapse of a building, killing three, including an eight year old girl. We'll take you to the region as the rains continue for a safe, straight day today. Some traders vow to resist the planned demolition of portions of the Cantamount to CMB market following the takeover by a private developer there. And comedian David Oscar admits the TV comedy series Laugh a Minute was not funny and uh, he's, he wasn't also uh, to blame for that situation. We have details of those stories plus a lot more including business, sports, entertainment as well as international. But it's all coming up in the next time here on News Today. Stay with us. My name is Kwabna Chen Chen and this is News Today. The chief of Kwari Nkrum in the central region has ordered the demolition of weak structures in the town following the collapse of a building that led to the death of three persons, including an eight-year-old. This follows torrential rains in parts of the central region that has left about 10 people dead after some drowned and others electrocuted. It's been raining in the area for six days now, causing heavy floods in several parts of the region. Let's get more now from correspondent Richard Kojemi who joins us on phone with those details. So, Kojo, uh, can you tell us exactly uh, what the chief means by uh, the demolition of weak structures? Well, um, let me tell you, uh, in this, I um, mean, the time we came, uh, township, and I can tell you that there are a lot of these weak structures that the chief is referring to the uh, mud house that some of them to uh, built with uh, this, and um, as we have rain continuously, this uh, long, um, some of these structures have been weakened by the second rain, and so uh, that is why the chief is saying that all of these weak structures have to be pulled down to avoid further calamity because that was what led to the collapse of the building and these things, including the two year old. And so, I, I, it, 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 <laughs> it's obvious uh, as we, I, I work and I'm going in the room, uh, working alongside the husband, one of the uh, husband of the deceased, um, who is working with me through what they went through, he showed me the structure, uh, how it happened and all of that. So that is what exactly the chief means when he said that uh, they ought to pull down, uh, to pull down all these structures. In a bit, we'll be uh, getting that very response from uh, the chief, that directive of his, but uh, I'm still looking at the numbers now, and the information we have suggests we have about 10 people who have died as a result of these rains. Okay, well, the additional fact that are not new, new uh, numbers. They happened about two weeks, uh, three weeks ago, and they are not fresh. Uh, what the five that we referred to, uh, referred to the five that happened, from Thursday up to today. And so there are no new deaths apart from the five that we reported. But all of these additional five, uh, five they are coming from, uh, they relate back to some two weeks, three weeks ago, when some of these things were happening. If you look at the situation at Katwa, it happened about two weeks ago. The one that I've done it happened about two weeks ago. And so there are no new deaths. Mm. Right. Indeed. Kojo, many thanks for that update. And that was uh, Central Regional Correspondent Richard Kojinyaku with details of that story. Then let's now take a listen to the Chief of Kwahin Krum, Nana Kwahin the Faith, who has directed that uh, all weak structures in the town be pulled down following the death of an eight year old after a building that collapsed uh, in those rings. Uh, the measures, as I said, it was already in place. Uh, we've already uh, sensitized the people about the, 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 the damage that this kind of rain can uh, cause. So we ask them, those who uh, are living in uh, those houses, to relocate uh, to their family, those where they maybe have jobs. And 
uh, if it is also brief and it's not all that strong, then you can also ask for some people to help you to I mean, rebuild. Re re and uh, we started bringing down some of the structures in consultation. We do this. You can't just do it with your own list. You just have to really negotiate with the people, uh, the family concerned, to put premium on their life. And those buildings. See, so those buildings that cannot be reconstructed or rehabilitated, we ask them to pull it down. Uh, so these are some of the things. And it's about education because we don't have that kind of mad power to just somebody's the law will you accommodate the person after you uh, uh, done that. Mm. Okay. So in terms of school children and the others, what have you told your parents to do in terms of these heavy rains? Yes, uh, the school children we even ask the headmaster uh, of the school, uh, the, uh, the, the acting headmistress to uh, uh, help the children to know that most of the uh, buildings, especially great buildings, mad houses, are uh, uh, traps. So the issue uh, should be rather be uh, getting away from those buildings. And uh, the way that when the rain is falling, you don't have to stand beside any uh, bird's house. Especially you look for a house that you know is uh, more, uh, more stronger than maybe those kind of buildings. So uh, uh, that, that is what we also recommend uh, to advise uh, uh, educators to do. Uh, Away from that now, let's come to the regional capital, Accra, and some traders here in the capital are vowed to resist the planned demolition of portions of the Cantamanto CMB market following the takeover by a private developer there. Now, this morning, the traders were evicted under heavy security as the new owners enforced the court order to possess the land. Joining us is Joseph Akable, just returned from that site and is now in studio with me to tell us uh, more about this very issue. So, Joseph, um, what, do, what are the concerns of uh, these traders? Well, first and foremost, Governor, what we are saying is the fact that the notice is quite short, that they've just been informed that they have to move away from the land. Aside the fact that um, there were some notices that were pasted some time back, the notice is still short for them to move. The second issue um, has to do with the fact that they paid monies to the railway association whom they claim own the land. So they want, if there is any form of eviction that has to be executed, they expect that the railway authorities whom they pay the money to come and first and foremost inform them, not any individual just coming in and telling them that I've purchased the land, so I want you to move away. So we spoke to the chairman for the welfare um, council, that is for the drivers at the CMB station, so we can listen to him. His name is Nana Awari. We can listen to him. MC, last year, no more. Salmon and Bernabai. Now, Ayan Susuna, name said, Yeah, I'm a dear person, and you're no councilman. It's as a Yaha since 1980. Now, 85, and now, Louis, El Maya, Quenya, HSA, El Say, Craig Moha. Until Yaha, 1985, no. Ama, the Yed Maya, the Chiaka, the Summon, and the Oma, Omotan, the Ohana, Louis, and the Summon, and as I feel, I'm to be doing this. And to know, sir, sir, you say, you have to be seen, you have to say, share country to another area, demonstration, CMB station, to prepare the hay, I drive us here, so I, yes, with Marina, I was seven nation. And I said, you have to say, my baby, I feel you is wrong. Now, you'll be seen a story. If you say, and tell you, and I said, so even when you're surprised, you say, oh, my God, I don't know, yeah, 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 yeah. I was saying, yeah, crying, I say, I'm only a can be. I saw a crying, no more, I just say, I feel you draw, you trade you know. Emma, I have crying, where was it? But you see, her mind, the whole pack in her mind. I mean, at that time, that was 207, you're 254 million. The demand raised. And the railways are as nice as long. You know, you say, yes, you can transport organization. And this is a railway soprano. See, I am minister back, not as I see the Hannah say. GPLT, and I said, drivers organization is near here. You know, if you send Kenya, and the only and say, you're tired, dear Mr. Dada. Now, you're dear man in professor, and I'm pharmacy market, and I saw my sister also. And that was the welfare chairman of the uh, Drivers Association there at CMB, uh, interacting with my colleague Joseph Akable, who is currently in studio with me, uh, telling us a little more on what happened today. So uh, maybe you could take us through what he just said. Well, the point he's making is the fact that they've been occupying the land um, since 1980, and the fact that they have an agreement with 
the Railway Association. Now, he mentions that as far back as somewhere in 2007, they made some payments um, to that particular association so that they have an agreement with them. So if there's any change to that agreement, if someone has purchased the land, they expect the Railway Authority to communicate with them. And since they've not been informed, they are not aware and they are adamant upon moving. Now, we also spoke to some traders who are also, who are also complain about the fact that they make some payments to the AMA daily and the AMA is aware they are occupying that particular land. So we can listen to the trader over there. Okay. Some time now they've been pasting series of court injunctions, but we don't know what is we, we don't know when they are coming on. This morning we just came and we the, the police came in with reinforcement saying we should pack out. We should pack out, but the AMA is aware we saw here because they come for a ticket uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, license every year, 10 cities. Even if you don't pay, they'll pack your things out. Every morning they come for a uh, ticket, 50 pesos. If you don't pay, they'll pack your things out. So the mayor is aware, the AMA is aware we saw here. They collect money from us. We don't sit here for free. They collect money from us. So they know we are here. So you just don't, you can't just get up one day and tell us we should just pack and leave. We can't just park like that. We have children. We are single parents. I'm a widow. My husband is dead for nine years. I don't, I, what do you want me to go and do? I can't go out. Where do I have to go and sell? You say we shouldn't sit on, uh, by the pavement. We shouldn't sit on the pavement. We shouldn't sit by the roadside. And now we are in the yard. You say we should move out. Fine. Then give us somewhere to go and sell. There is no market for us. I've completed, uh, I completed a uh, GCO level. 2019-99. There is no white collar job for me, so I'm selling at the market. I'm a single parent for three children. So, what is the exact reason they gave you? That is why they are saying you shouldn't. Uh, they've sold the, 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 the land for someone, one individual that we don't know, we don't know about. They've sold it to that person, and so we should just park and leave. So, when have you been given as a deadline that you are supposed to leave this place? Just this morning, we are parking within 24 hours. We should park this morning. There is no time limit. We are parking. The police is on us. We are parking. So that was a trader also expressing a frustration with that decision uh, by a private investor to take over that property and develop it. I still have Joseph Akable who witnessed everything that happened today with me in studio telling us more about what happened. So Joseph, we know now that uh, tomorrow we are picking signals that there's a planned demolition exercise there and these traders are uh, vowing to resist that action. Tell us more about that. Well, what is the position of the traders? They are saying that they feel that they are not being treated fairly. So come tomorrow if indeed the planned demolition exercise that we are picking signals, if it indeed comes off, they are going to resist it. They are going to come clad in red apparel and they are going to um, resist all efforts to demolish them from that particular side. What they are calling for is pretty simple. They are saying that either we are giving more time or another land is found for them or perhaps government can pay that amount of money that the private individual um, used to purchase the land so that they continue to stay there. Now concerning the private individual, we've been trying um, to find out who exactly that person is. But one particular name that kept coming up is First Eye Limited, trying to confirm that was a big difficulty. The gentleman was that he declined to speak to us. But that was the name that the traders kept mentioning. Um, that that particular um, company, First Eye Limited, they have secured the action from the court. And as a result of that, they are evicting them. Okay. Right. Joseph, many thanks for that. Ability. And that was Joseph Akaple, as well as reporter, who just returned to the studio from the Cantonment to CMB area there where there's been a bit of confusion there this morning over uh, a demolition exercise and a, a pending demolition exercise I might add. We'll be bringing you more details on our news and news analysis program, the post which airs at 3 p.m. on the same channel. But away from that now and imagine visiting your child or ward in a school only to find them sitting on a ladder, a jerry can, popularly known as Kufo gallons and other objects for lack of furniture. That's when students of Mpasaso number two junior high school in the Shanti region have had to endure over time. The situation is impacting negatively, not only on the health of the children, but academically as well. In the following report, Insurance Firms of Human Interior has been speaking to some of their pupils. So we have to be comfortable. So we need a help. We need a help. When you sit on the uh, chair, especially when you uh, shaking. So even when I was writing, uh, I don't write properly. When you sit on, when the teacher is teaching or when you writing. You can see that some of the students are sitting on track. So if the teacher is sitting, you will not be able to listen. That's what they do in that situation here. 
you can also see that some of the students are sitting on the campus and some are sitting on the benches. So when the teacher is sitting, you find it difficult when you are writing or when the teacher is sitting. Because some of us are in bad behavior. So if you are ready, uh, your students listen to the teacher, they will just push you, uh, push you, punch you, and punch you. So you will not be able to listen to what the teacher is saying. Because when you sit on the chairs, you are not so well to be able to do a lot of this. That's what the problem is facing. So you need to confess so many things that you are able to sit on it. Well, I mean to raise joining us on the line now with more on this uh, weather disturbing issue. And uh, I, mean, I mean, we heard from the pupils there in that video. Pretty worrying situation there, it appears to be. I mean, how are the teachers handling the situation? Yes, uh, Cabra, the situation has not been all that rosy for uh, teachers and pupils of Mpasaso uh, Junior High School. For teachers, uh, they, they are worried because anytime they teach in class, there's lack of concentration from their pupils. While some of them may be falling in the class because uh, they are sitting on objects that are weak, or uh, maybe they are fighting over limited space in the classroom. Uh, I spoke to a couple of them, and one of them echoed the sentiments of his colleagues. Right. This is <coughs> teaching and learning is not going on. And we are supposed to impart knowledge into our people, but we are not getting the necessary equipment to teach. And one of the uh, equipment is the chess or the dice. So we are pleading on behalf of the government or any stakeholder who can do us a favor to provide us with uh, some of the lessons. So we are facing problems here. And they, they find it difficult. That's why I, I first said, some of you don't come to school. Because the person, if the person comes to the class, the person will not get a seat to sit on. So some are finding it difficult to come to class for teaching and learning to go on. So some are in the house right now that we are. And we are using the before hours to emphasize. But for now, the fundraisers are about going to write their exam so those in the form one and form two are using that to form ones to study in their class. So here we don't have sad galons here. And now the teacher lamenting the situation at Mpasaso in the Ashanti region there to my colleague Ohimin Teria. There you're watching news today here on your journey channel on Multi TV. We are taking a break. We'll be back shortly with some more. Don't go away. Thanks for staying with us here on News Today. Now, the Finance Minister, Seth Tekla, is expected to respond to an urgent question on the legality of the mobile money services undertaken by the telcos. During his learning, the question had been admitted for the Minister to respond to. A member of the Finance Committee of Parliament, Alexander Fenny Markins, who is pushing the question, says the move aims at getting the telcos to account for all monies taken under the service. In a bit, we'll be uh, getting through to our parliamentary correspondent, Elton Berbe, who'll be giving us more on this. But away from that now, let's speak about uh, uh, some other things that are happening in the country. And Amma Chavez will be firmly remembered for her hearted contributions to political debates in and outside parliament. Radio listeners particularly will miss her badly for her views on her, especially her spirited defense of the legacy of the PNDC and the NDC. She's particularly remembered for an incident in the studios of Abim FM in Tema when she flared up during an argument and punched Baby and Saba of the Daily Guide for debunking her argument. For that, she earned an unenviable title as Amma Chavez, named after Julio Chavez, the greatest all-time WBC uh, middleweight champion from Mexico. Now, out of active politics, Joyce is ever coming caught up with her for a chat about life after politics. What do you make of the current political climate, especially since we are moving towards an election? We have less than uh, five months to be election. What do you make of the political climate? Yeah, I think it's gearing up. And 
and uh, sometimes people make it look like we are almost at the war path. But I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. Each party is supposed to articulate its position in the strongest term. But I think we should stay away from, you know, any antagonism that can bring clashes between political parties. And that's the way I see it. If you don't go attacking other political parties and you stay in your line, there's no way that you will you, you get into any uh, problems. But I think that people sometimes take delight in uh, deliberately provoking that, that uh, the party in government. And I think so far, I command my people for staying away from any kind of provocation. Because the tendency is that the opposition members will find some provoking you. And once you don't restrain yourself, it's you as a member of leading political party who is ruling that people are going to criticize. But so far, they have stayed away from this kind of antagonism. Now, um, there's been a lot of talk about the, the factory over the past, past few days. What do you make of the whole uh, concept of this new initiative there and the, the promise that it was, it's going to create so many jobs? Yeah, I have refrained for some time now from going directly into political activity. But I think that sometimes it saddens me when I hear some people from the region trying very hard to, you know, bring issues that looks like the factory can never work. Why don't you all support? Even where there are problems, support. But I don't see you so. Because we have just seen that the president went and commissioned it. Now there's this talk about commission and whether it should have been inauguration and it's all just semantics. And sometimes you wonder what exactly people are up to. Because you decide whatever you think is right as a specific time and to go ahead to do it. People are there working. And people talk as if it's not true that people are even there. But someone had gone there and said he has seen the factory working. So what is our difficulty? Is it our difficulty is to uh, portray things very hard as the generality of the public to see that the factory does not work. To some other stories now, and ever wondered why the Laugh a Minute show, especially the first episode, was not funny? Well, your feelings may have been right. Uh, this is because the man himself who was the face of the show, David Oscar, admits the show was not funny. Now, he tells me to say, despite noticing that the show was not as funny as expected, there was pretty little he could do about it, seeing that he was neither producing nor scripting the show himself. Take a listen. When we were filming Laugh a Minute back in the Times, people felt, oh, the show was not funny and all of that. Well, did you feel the same way? Of course, of course. But you see, for PR reasons, I was not allowed to speak about it. I was not allowed to talk about it. But you were the one acting out. So if you yourself felt it was not funny, obviously, as long as you, the person, you don't believe in it, the viewers would also feel the same way you are feeling. And so if you yourself felt that it was not funny, you could have done something about it. I was brought on as a host i was auditioned like several other people who were auditioned and i was brought on as a host now when i was given the job as a host i had a team of script writers who would sit with me who go through whatever videos they give us we try to script it and theme, you know put it on the themes and then we go to the studio we put a script on the teleprompter so basically what i was doing then was to present a show I don't think I was doing stand-up comedy. But because I feel there wasn't too much education about what the various forms and aspects and uh, you know genres of comedy is, people just judged at a go, like, okay, make me laugh. If you're unable to make me laugh, then that's it, you're not. Without you know getting the time and the trouble to find out what was really going on behind the scenes, because as I explained to you, I was hosting a show. The show was scripted, and I, and I told you I wasn't allowed to speak about these things back in the times because of PR reasons, you know. So now, when after the season one, we all, when I say we, I mean the team, the, uh, the CEO, and everybody else who was involved in the production sat down, we assessed the comments that came in. They allowed us now to tweak the production, to bring in some of our own Ghanaian humor. That is when the likes of GKB, Foster, and the rest came in to play other characters. Now we got the chance to enact our jokes on the sets. 
And I think that if anybody followed it closely, the season two, the review we got for the season two was much better, you know. But from the season one, these are content the station has procured from Much us. better in terms, in terms from your perspective or in terms of the comments you had. Because then you're judging the program based on how people see it. Yeah, of course. I mean, you need to understand that humor is very subjective, you know. And most of these videos that were given to work with were all foreign-based materials. And that was actor, now turned musician, David Oscar, in an interview there with Joy News' Beatrice Edu. We're still watching news today on your Joy News channel on Multi TV. Time now for some business with John Kujomwako. Stay on. time for the business update and the Bank of Ghana is attributing recent sharp depreciation of the city to dividend payment by multinationals in the country. The local currency over the past three weeks has suffered some serious losses against the dollar. This has resulted in the city currently selling at almost four Ghana cities among some banks and forex bureaus. George Ave has more what actually contributing this in this report. Projections by Joy Business shows that prices could be going up by at least 2 to 3% per litre from this Thursday. Engaging some of the importers and marketers indicates that the jump has been influenced by the increasing price of crude oil on the international market and the recent sharp depreciation of the Ghana city. From our calculations, a litre of diesel could go up by at least 2%, which could result in a gallon being sold at around 19 Ghana cities. However, it looks like petrol could still remain at around 16 Ghana cities per gallon, because our calculations point to a possible reduction or the price could be kept unchanged. However, with the information that most of the marketers are yet to factor in the recent depreciation of the Ghana city, then prices could go up by more than what we are projecting. But with the recent policy which allows the various marketers and importers to set their own prices, there's a likelihood that there might not be any increase in price depending on the service station that you drive to. We apologize for the wrong sound 14 there, but that is supposed to be the 14 for the um, petroleum prices increment that we are actually expecting um, this Tuesday. And you should be prepared to pay more for a litre of petroleum product purchase. This is because prices of the various products are expected to go up in line with a two week review. That was the report we did play earlier on. Now, let's take our earlier story here on the update on business to do with that particular report in terms of far as the city depreciation is concerned. Let's take, it, let's take that one. According to sources close to the Bank of Ghana, depreciation should be seen as normal just because of the surge in demand from multinationals that are looking for dollars to pay their shareholders outside the country. The sudden pressure has resulted in the city moving from the three Ghana city range to about four Ghana cities just over the past three weeks among some banks and forex bureaus. The Bank of Ghana maintains that it is working to release more dollars onto the market to deal with this sudden demand while it also works to control the amount of dollars that these multinationals can send outside the country, especially in these times. The central bank is hoping the Ghana city will recover and stabilize strongly against the dollar from July this year. So that will be it for your midday business. My name is John Kojo Amwako. But there's more business stories on the marketplace between 1 and 1 to Just let's make a date there. Coming up next is your sports. <laughs> Well, we're still here on news today. My name is Benedict Tolus. Let's talk sports now. John Pintel has been charged with a fourth count assault of a public officer, this time 
why Detective Sergeant William Jamesi, he tried arresting the ex-Black Stars defender after he assaulted the East Logan District commander and he shoved him aside, leading to the policeman's injury in the right leg. Now, reading the charge sheet, the prosecutor, DSP Gali, said John Pintel, before landing the heavy blow on the eye of the police commander, hurled insult on him and also accused him of flirting with his wife. John Pintel responded not guilty to all the charges and was admitted to a 5,000 Ghana cities bill with one surety. Now, the case has been adjourned to July 15, 2016. Still stay on the local scene in Ghana Football Association Technical Director Tia Kenton has loaded President Christina Antichi for introducing new measures to help improve the local game. Now, the Ghana FA has contracted in start football to help provide analysis of matches in the top flight as the Ghana Premier League. The statistics and analysis on performance will help coaches to scout their opponents and improve their players. This Tia Kenton believes it will improve our football. It's very good. As for that one, nobody should doubt it. It's so good. It's going to help us. And it will also improve our technological uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, I think it's good. Let us pick it up and then see uh, how we will we'll improve uh, upon our game. I think it's, it's, I will still say that it's a wonderful idea. And uh, we, we are very grateful to the president uh, for thinking about this and also to the executive committee in general that they have all thought about how the game should be improved and uh, uh, through the, the, the coach education aspect. Uh, I, I believe it will help us a lot. Already we are doing it. We, we have delved into it and we've tried as much as possible to be using even our, our manual uh, 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 expertise. So now that if we, are, we are going to have this one, why should we even make any noise about it? It is going to help the coaches themselves. And I, I think it's a welcome idea. We pick it up. My name is Becky and I'm so glad to be serving you with all the entertainment news here on Joy News today. Now, let's get more exclusive interviews from the Amos where we had the likes of Joe Silva at RMD uh, sharing, with the, uh, sharing with us the excitement about winning the Lifetime Achievement Award. Dream come true. It's a dream come true. There are just so many emotions. I wish my mother was alive. She just died last year. I wish she was alive to see me get the Lifetime Achievement Award because it's just such a huge award and, you know, you're just so grateful to God. You know, I mean, as an actor, um, this is my 33rd year as a professional. Um, when you work, you, you never really care, you know, about the awards or whatever. You just work hoping that we were making a difference. Sitting with RMD before I was invited to come again the award, right? And I'm very, very happy about it. RMD is somebody who's worked extremely hard, right? Just like Ulu and wife. If you give those people awards for achievement, you've performed, you've done very well. It's a recognition. And when they go home, the people who look up to them as a source of inspiration will be encouraged to follow them, right? It's not just free. We had best director, best cinematographer, and best production design, which are like the, the most artistic, you know, yeah, part of the film. Fantastic ones to win, amazing ones to win. We also spoke to some of the biggest names in Nigeria movies about the falling standards of movies these days. Here is their take on this issue. The standards are telling me everything, everything, but we hope that it's going to rise. That somebody's going to come out and do that in the position and work for us, you know? If I don't do it, somebody else will do it. <laughs> the standard is not falling. The standard is growing, but there are so many fake directors, producers that are coming up. But they will still fall by the wayside. The young ones are doing very well. They are doing very well. Um, we normally have technical problems in our production. Sometimes the audio is weak, etc. And again, because English is not a own language, not indigenous to us, 
sometimes we don't speak well, right? But you don't blame the people. Not everybody is supposed to speak like that. I trained as a broadcaster on the BBC. I retired as director of programs as a broadcaster. I don't expect others to speak the way I do. Me? I am very, 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 very hopeful. Oh yes, if I'm not, I won't be here. I won't be talking to you. I have, I have the confidence. People will have the talent. Just calm them, calm them down. They are anxious. They are eager. We calm them down. And you too, press. You have your own job to do. You, you give them. You, you call them fantastic. Somebody has just only one small part. Ah, absolutely, there is a new star. You know, ah, so the poor thing. Look at it. I'm a star. Hey, you know, when, you, when you talk to them, they say, I'm a star. I'm a star. I'm a star. Parkour in Ghana, profanity have become, has become an issue in the music industry lately and there have been calls by some industry players to help stop the act. When I caught up with some mainstream acts, I asked them what they make of the profanity in the music industry. Profanity, yeah, I, 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 I think is wrong. Um, uh, we are living in a country where where you don't you don't you, you don't control there's nothing like uh, parental guidance on songs or we are living in a country where music can't even ban songs it's part of us you see sometimes um it's it's, it's hard to to talk about it but it's part of us as we say we have adult movies and we have adult music Prime time from seven to eight is good to show telenovelas on TV, kissing and wearing bikinis and all that, and it's okay. But when musician goes to the studio, enter the booth and sing about something close to that, it's profane. I don't necessarily have to say before you know what I'm talking about. I can, you can, because kids are listening as well. You don't want, to, and especially it's always difficult. I think this is the reason why people easily related to Kill Me Shy, even the kids, because they don't see, there's no vulgar words in there, and they could easily relate, and they're, they're saying it like their kids rhyme. Because even though it's a mature lyric and everything, I didn't say anything well, but when I'm performing in front of kids, I had to be like careful in my words and everything. So I think there's so many ways to go around it. I don't know anything about profane music. I know we're preaching about love and all that is involved with love, so I don't see anything profane when you're singing about ladies or you're singing about love. It's just something that happens then it triggers you to, I mean, do a music with. And that ends it for the segment today. My name is Becky. Enjoy the rest of our programs. And that's our wrap up on news today this afternoon on your journey news channel on Multi TV. My name is Kwabna Chen Chen Inibuating. There's more news when you log on to www.myjoinonline.com. The marketplace comes up next with John Kujamwakon. Many thanks for your company.